Hi, I'm Nan Simonson. Oh, of, I was going to say of Aging Powerfully with Noun. I'm an author of Aging Powerfully. The point being, we can age with power from any starting point. Young people don't even want to think about aging. When you get into your 50s, you start realizing, oh, I'm getting there. And then 60s and I'm now 73 and at 70, I wrote that book before turning 70 as a celebration to turning 70 because of the possibility that we can age with power, in which case we could have decades ahead of us. And that's my mission. Well, not just to have decades ahead of me, hopefully one, two, and maybe even three, but to pass that word along because as a health and wellness coach with a lifestyle medical practice, it's remarkable the things that we see that people can do when they pay attention through lifestyle modalities um, and prioritize the things that keep us from aging poorly. So I asked a question to preempt this PowerPoints and the understanding of this series is PowerPoints of interest as they relate to lifestyle as medicine. In other words, medicine not being something they hand you after they give you a prescription, but something that we can do in our lives to um, give us health, vitality, joy, and food and the pillars of health can do that. So I'm not going to get into all of that because I do in a number of other videos, but I found a book. I heard a podcast. I believe I've spoken to you about it. Rich Roll interviewed, and he's a wonderful podcaster. He's whole food, plant-based, has been for years, was, well, he would say I'm still an addict, uh, drug and alcohol, but he has been sober for decades and he's just um, sensitive. And, and oh, well, I'll go on to say, and then he became a world class athlete setting records. And he does a great job of hearing from and spending time with people who are, um, to quote Chef AJ, making a difference in this world. Um, from the health and wellness and uh, mindful perspective. So he interviewed Dr. Ellen Langer, a professor at Harvard University uh, in the psychology department. Uh, she's been with them for over 40 years. And the book, she's written many books, and the book that they were referencing is one of her newest or maybe her newest called The Mindful Body. This isn't the book. <laughs> I just copied this from my Amazon page because I ordered it as an audible. I knew that I would buy the book and not read it through in a efficient amount of time. And so I just put it on audible and I speed it up. And while I'm riding every morning, which I do my bike and when I'm doing anything else that allows me to listen I listen and I learn and I love what she's talking about. So why would I have asked that question? What makes you brilliant and beautiful, which is such a kind of a vague reference? Well, because I needed to make a point and it was a point that she makes and it comes down to perspective. You can write that word on the palm of your hand and look at it multiple times a day. It's basically the way we see a thing. If we see ourselves as beautiful, as brilliant, as capable, as good enough, we can bring about what we think about. And I was in sales for decades. I owned my own Tupperware franchise, thousands and thousands of consultants coming through those doors. And I taught people how to succeed. And one of the things we talked about was success in sales, but basically success psychologically and believing in yourself. And again, one of the things we said all the time was you Think you bring about what you think about. So there are other people who have said things similarly. For example, 
Lois Hayes, or is it Louise Hayes, Lois Hayes. Um, some people think her books, I heard about her through Chef AJ, and one of, some people would say, oh, she's just too woo-woo. Everything that you think you're going to bring about, and all you have to do is repeat it a hundred times, and it's going to be you. And she has sold millions of books on that premise. And then there's The Secret, and some people think The Secret is way too... Um, Oh, I'll just say out there and too simplistic. Um, you, um, it's the the what they call they don't call it the science, but they call it the the uh, a, a belief in the um, the results of affirmative uh, uh, oh mindset. The that you can again bring about what you think about. And then, and I talk about her all the time, Dr. Barbara Fredrickson, Dr. Langer is at Harvard, Dr. Fredrickson, I believe is in Philadelphia. And is she Philadelphia? Anyway, a professor um, there also with her own lab. And she has proven, Dr. Fredrickson, PhD, she has proven the science between creating happiness and health and help in moments of connectivity, which means love, which means connection with other people. In other words, these are top down responses. So when you get to the mindful body, what is she talking about? Well, what makes this book really interesting, and I've gone through it once on Audible, and I'll probably go through it again, is that she, she states multiple times, dozens of times, um, and gives the the science-backed uh, uh, numbers and and results of the uh, things that they have studied in her lab on the mind body connection, which when she started talking about this was was resoundingly, um ignored uh can you resoundingly ignore something yeah i think you can loudly put your thumbs down and do it uh she couldn't even get some papers accepted that she put in that had backing from their studies and they some things wouldn't even be um uh put into print because the mind body connection was thought to be um uh unscientific well she has proven that she can affect that we can affect the body based on the way we think and she does she has done hundreds of examples of how that works how what somebody thinks about a thing can actually change for example their eyesight the person is in a flight simulator is told they're a pilot I just said this at a nut to another group. I hope it wasn't you. And um, because they were told pilots have excellent eyesight and they were in this simulator uh, uh, and they had responsibility to get that flight in, um, that they could see what they couldn't see before. And these things were tested before and after. They could see better because they believed that. People who believed that they were going to get a cold because of exposure got colds. People in the same environment with the same contagions who believed that they were immune did not get colds. The amount of power our thoughts have on our body leads us to understand and to believe that we can bring about remarkable change. I've been making some noise lately about um, how this has affected me in that, and these beliefs have affected me in that I have come to believe that because of learning disabilities, I couldn't progress in, uh, in um, technical stuff. Uh, even just getting my computer to work well or new programs I'm trying to install. And I have been fighting that by believing differently and it still makes me nervous. And I still sometimes think, see, Nan, 
uh, you can't do that while I sit up at night and try to get through it. But she said something wonderful about that. She said, there are certain laws in the universe that I know if I follow, I will get certain results. She said, when I took on working in a computer, and this was decades ago for her, she said, I came to understand there were certain laws to these technical things. And if I follow those laws, I'll get results. If I don't, it will, you know, she didn't say dig in her hill there, it, it's hills, but I won't get um, results from it. And so she saw it as a fun um, game. And I, I have to be, I'm telling myself that it's getting better. So I'm just now just kind of blabbering. So I'm going to stop. <laughs> but there's a really good point here. A couple of points. Listen to um, uh, uh, Rich Roll interview Ellen Langer regarding the mindful body. You can just look that up on YouTube. Consider her book. The Audible is fun. She's a super cool person who, after you hear her speak, will leave you understanding how much more power you have just to be happy every day, just to get through times that would otherwise put you down um, based on your perspective that would rise you, raise you up um, simply with a change of thought and perspective she talked about in an article because i i did a little bit of a deeper dive into her and she um there was an article that was in her blog back in 2011 that had to do with something she leaves her students with so she teaches graduate students and posts and she works with postdocs and she has this acronym glotto let me, let me tell you about this. This is so cool. She said, as a sending off ceremony, when I'm about to release our new either PhDs or um, graduate students, uh, I have a message uh, and my recipe for happiness to success. She said, the recipe is an acronym, the acronym GLADO, G-L-A-D-O, GLADO. The prescription is to be generous, loving, authentic, direct, and open, and well-being should result. It implicitly, it implicitly follows from years of research on mindfulness, the mindful understanding that behavior makes sense from the actor's perspective or else she wouldn't be doing or he wouldn't be doing what it is that they had done to be less evaluative or which should lead us to be less evaluative of others and of ourselves. In other words, whatever we do at a certain time in our life for a certain reason, we must have had a good reason at one time, but reevaluating can sometimes lead us to understand hmm, Maybe that's not serving me anymore. Maybe I can reevaluate that. But the point is, understanding that instead of putting ourselves or others down, we can instead remove the impediments to generosity by caring, authenticity, being direct, and not fearing being open and true to ourselves. So glotto. Generous, loving, authentic, direct, and open. I like that. I think that's a nice cap on what I'm saying about what I consider to be a really special lady. She's smart as a whip, too. When you listen to her talk, the things she talks about are at such an elevated level, and yet it's it's just part of her um, everyday understanding of life. Uh, she's a breath of fresh air. That's all I want to say. So back to my question, what makes you brilliant and beautiful? You do. Do you have to be in other people's eyes, brilliant and beautiful? Or are you delusional? No, you don't have to be. In your eyes, if you are, you will be. And it'll bring out the best in you. 
and it'll make you want to live up to what you believe of yourself. And it's all based on perspective. There's a lot more to it than that. That's why she wrote a book and she's written many books on the mind body, um, the mindful body and what um, mindfulness means. It goes beyond what we think of when we're doing our yoga or meditation. So I'll leave it at that. I hope this was helpful. I It's, it's just a starter for you. It's a springboard to consider uh, looking further into this and um, have a great day because I know I'm going to. Bye-bye.